to the Mass of the, the Mass of the Vigil of Easter, the United St. Mary's, and this um, the Epistle for this Holy uh, Vigil Mass is taken from St. Paul's Holy Colossians chapter 3. Brethren, if you be risen with Christ, seek the things that are above, for Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Mind the things that are above, not the things that are upon the earth. For you are, if you, for you, for you are dead, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ shall appear, who is your life, then you shall also appear with him in the world. In the Gospel, take that according to St. Matthew, chapter 28. And in the end of the Sabbath, when it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and coming rolled back the stone and sat upon it. And his countenance was as lightning, and his raiment as snow. And for fear of him, the guards were struck with terror and became as dead men. And the angel answering said to the woman, to the women, Fear ye not. For I know that you seek Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come and see the place where the Lord was laid. And going quickly, tell ye his disciples that he has risen. And behold, he will go before you into Galilee. There you shall see him. Lo, I have told it to you. Our brother, today's holy gospel. For this sacred night of Easter, 2,000 years after our Lord rose from the dead, due considerations of the situation of this night, remember that during this holy night, there was great darkness. And as we say, there was an hypnox esque to say many times in the exultet. This is the night. The night in which so many great things happened. But what's interesting about this night, it is the night of the victory of Christ over Satan. It is the night of the resurrection. <coughs> but what is the spirit of the holy women? What is the situation of the apostles and of Caiaphas and the enemies of God during this night? Right about now, we are about an hour and a half or two hours, about two hours before the actual resurrection. And what was the situation? We know that the reality is Satan has been defeated. And we know that the way that Satan is defeated is by the Holy Cross. We also know that our Lord Jesus Christ said that he must die upon a cross. So he did. And he said we must also take up our cross and follow him. And so he must. But when the victory took place, it did not appear so to the holy apostles. And it didn't appear so to the holy women. What was in their heart at 3 o'clock this morning? They were filled with a great sorrow. They were filled with a great heaviness. Because Christ was God. But what is happening during this great sorrow of the apostles? And the great sorrow of the blessed, of, of, of the holy women. What is happening during this great sorrow is that our Lord is preparing the victory. He wants them to experience a little bit of sorrow, so that when he comes before them, their joy shall be infinitely greater. And he's also going to teach them about sorrow, because there will be sorrows from this day of Easter Sunday morning, Good Friday, until the ending of the world. And what are we to do in the time of sorrows? What are we to think in the time of sorrows? What is to be our spirit? in the time of sorrows. And remember what our Lord Jesus Christ
Christ told St. Mathilde about 800, 900 years ago. What was in my heart, he said, when I walked the way of the cross? Do you not know it was my wedding dance? That's what he told her. It was my wedding dance. Where it was a custom at that time that when a young girl was about to be married, she would be brought out into the city square, and then all the elderly young men would be brought and put inside of a rope, and the minstrels would play, and the men would dance, and the woman would sit in a chair, and she would look. Whichever one danced best, that's my husband. But they would choose whichever one danced best. And he said, this was my wedding dance. For while I walked the way of the cross, and while I was scourged and crowned with thorns, what was in my mind? What was in my heart? And he was teaching us what is supposed to be in our minds and what is supposed to be in our hearts when we have sorrows. Our Lord Jesus Christ made a decision he decided to go to death. He made a decision. He decided to go to war. And this decision was to defeat Satan. Once the decision was made, he would not go back. And therefore, Christ, the devil was dead. Many men in a battle, one man said in a battle back in the Middle Ages, he was on his way to his wedding. And he said, yes, there was a battle. I remember a battle. There were moors. I remember moors. There was blood. I remember blood. But my heart was not in my sword. And my mind was not in the battle. For I was thinking that it is the way to my way. And when our Lord Jesus Christ fights a battle. And when any man who has the heart of Christ fights a battle, what must be in his heart? Are we attentive to the sword? Are we attentive to the combat? What makes us fight? What makes us go to a cross? It is the love of a bride. That is what makes us go to the cross. And what must we think of at this time? We must think of the love of the bride. We are all guilty of sins. We are all weak. And we are all deserving of punishment. And yet we forget about the rule of St. Anthony of the Desert that we should all be familiar with. That Anthony one day was on a walk and a man came to him and said, Anthony, Anthony, I am most blessed. All my prayers have been answered. I have received everything I've ever wanted in life. And I have had so many blessings from God. Is that what you have had in your life, said Anthony? Yes, I am most blessed. And Anthony was filled with terror. This is Anthony who had hand-to-hand -hand combat with the devil on a regular basis, who fought Satan in the most serious manner and had no fear of Satan. But when he saw that that man had every prayer answered, that man had all his wishes fulfilled, that man had lived such a wonderful life with no troubles, he was filled with horror and he ran in terror away from that man. His disciples were with him and so they ran after him. They said, Anthony, we've never seen you afraid. Why are you so afraid? If that man has never seen a cross, if that man has said all his prayers are heard and everything always went his way, God must be very angry with him. And I don't want to be there when God shows up. The great Anthony ran. That's what you do when you run across a man with no sorrows and too much comfort. What about a few sorrows? Our Lord has been gone for almost three days. How long is that? It is such a long time. 
One woman without Christ is in eternity. And there is such great agony in the St. Mary Magdalene, there is such great agony in all of the apostles, because Christ is God. But what should be in their hearts? What is he trying to teach them? He's trying to teach them what St. Mary Magdalene of Potsy learned about joy. She said, Out Potty, out Mori. Either let me suffer or let me die, for my joy is in suffering. My joy is in the night. My joy is in sorrow, because it is here that I am closest to Christ. And when the sorrow gets a little more, then we must understand that Christ is more near, that the victory is closer, and we have to experience a few sorrows, and on this very night, they experience the sorrows, a dark night. And what is going to happen in this night? Mary Magdalene is going to go to the tomb of the other Mary, and there she's going to find the stone rolled back. And she's going to find that Christ is risen, but she still does not believe or understand. But what has happened inside of her sorrowful heart? Yes, she has sorrow, and she is filled with great agony. But Christ is over her, and Christ is near her, and he will see, she will see him in a gardener. If she will not understand that it is Christ, she will think that it's a gardener. She won't understand. And our Lord teaches us what was in the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary during these three days. She knew the victory that had happened, the mother of sorrows. She was expecting the great return of her son. What did our Lord say during this kind of night? When you see wars and rumors of wars, when you see earthquakes and tumults, lift up your head and know your redemption is nigh. Behold, it is at hand. We must understand the crisis. It is a reality now as of this coronavirus, virus that Sasquatch and other creatures have that have not been known to us. But this virus announces the beginning of the police state before us. It's already been here. Many souls are not at mass tonight simply because of fear. That's all. It has begun. And we want to go back to the old days. We want to go back to the way it was. Is that really what we want? We don't want to go back to the way it was. We don't want to go to the victory of Christ. We want to go to the resurrection. There was such sorrow in the heart of the apostles this morning, in the heart of the holy women. He let them have this sorrow, and he would heal it all by his miraculous and most wonderful resurrection. And St. Peter would say a truth to us that we ought to remember till the end of time. And he said in his very first sermon on Pentecost Sunday, and he said it multiple times, without the resurrection, our faith is in vain. But our faith is not in vain. We cannot meet the sorrows of these nights like the apostles did. Our Lord will let us suffer by faith. We can never have the agony that St. Peter had. We can never lose what he lost in the way that he did. We can never imagine the St. Mary Magdalene. But we must experience a few little sorrows. Remind us that we must be sorry for our sins, that's true. But does our Lord want us to be sorry for our sins? No. He wants us to love him. That's what he wants. And if we love him, we'll be sorry for our sins. But it is not the sorrow for our sins that he wants. It is not us to stop sinning that he wants. He wants us to love him. The love of him will make us stop sinning. The love of him will make us sorrow for our sins. The love of him will especially make us know what to do in these nights. It was the most wonderful monk whose name we do not know who was very close to God who wrote the most beautiful poem that has ever been written in the history of the world. It is sung 
in the mass, the early part of the day, that takes 13 minutes to sing it, the exultet. When does he sing the exultet? Exult in Yom Angelica. Let the angels rejoice. The angels rejoice. When do we rejoice? Who are the followers of Christ in the night? What did St. Lawrence do when he was being rose on the gridiron? He says, this is not waiting for this to be over. No, he rejoiced in the night. <laughs> and our Lord Jesus Christ told St. Matilde that he rejoiced in the night. We are in the night of a small suffering right now, in the night of a small fear. Many are afraid because they've lost their jobs. Many are afraid because they've lost their comforts. What are we afraid of losing? There should be only one thing we're afraid of losing, and that is the knowledge and love of God. That is our holy faith. And if we have not lost that, there's no reason to be sorry in the night. In fact, we repeat the words of that beautiful exultant by that great monk that wrote those words of a thousand years ago. Take no excess. Take no excess. Take no excess. This is the night. The night that made the Egyptians poor. This is the night that made the Hebrews rich. This is the night that's lit up by a star that is much greater than the day star. This is the most wonderful night. So many beautiful things happen in the night. This is the time to love God. This is the time to be at peace. This is the time to have a great heart. Now is the time. In the night. Everyone wants to show up in a celebration. Christ is about to rise in an hour from now. Do we believe? We know that the Blessed Virgin shall have her victory, and we are now near the triumph of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and a resurrection that's going to happen for our Holy Church. We know that. But we're afraid of a cops coming. We're afraid of a fine. We're afraid of jail time. We're afraid of getting the mark. The time is going to come. We're going to give you a vaccine. We're going to get a chip. And if you don't take the chip, and if you don't get the vaccine, well, you, you can't renew your license. You can't get back to work. No one will buy your products. We are slowly moving towards the time of the mark of the beast. It will not be yet because the merit of Virgin Mary must have her victory, but now is a prequel test. What happened when those 11 apostles got thrown in jail? It was only a few months after this resurrection, and they were thrown in prison for the first time. And the scripture tells us they were on the way to jail, and they sang, and they rejoiced. They wear the red sash, as a priest of India, in honor of St. John of Rica. He had one great desire, that great Jesuit, who died on February the 5th, 1693. He had one great desire, only one, to die a martyr of Christ. That's all he wanted. His only desire. The saddest day in his life, two of them, was when they were going to kill him and they tortured him, and then they changed their minds and released him. He said, I don't want to be released. I want to die for our Lord. And the happiest day of his life was the day that he shed his blood for Christ. What happens in the night? We are learning by this most holy and most wonderful resurrection what we are supposed to do when it's dark outside. What are you supposed to do when it's dark outside? Believe in the light. Believe in the victory. Know that we have Christ's light inside of us. And that our enemies are about to be defeated because the longer it's dark, what does that mean? We're closer to the daybreak. The longer it's dark, we're closer to the day. And the day cannot be stopped. It's dark 
right now. I'm hoping the sermon will stop. Don't worry, keep sleeping. We'll let you know. But the fact is, it will end. And the night will end. And there will be a day. And every moment of darkness is a moment closer to the light. And now we know that. Now we are all supposed to, apostles are supposed to know that. The little women were supposed to know that. But they didn't understand because they'd never seen such a miracle before. But we have seen it. We don't have the excuses that they have. Yes, we have foolish fear inside of our hearts. We are afraid of foolish things. But let us rejoice in the night. I remember when I was a seminarian on Easter night. And I remember all the stories, all the stories when we were kids. Vacation with Dad, called the vacation from hell. All kinds of things went wrong. And everything and afterwards, you tell the story about it for the next 50 years and you laugh. At the time, you didn't laugh. I was thinking about that on Easter night. I was driving home from the seminary. The seminary with me that had to take a bath for about six months. <laughs> Smell was getting really bad. Pulled into a gas station. I loaded up with gas. It wasn't gas, it was diesel. This is happening once in the history of the world, that was there. They put diesel into a gas tank. I saw the truck, and when I pulled out, they closed the gas station because they car, but I was just in time before they closed the gas station. So I'm driving out with diesel on my gas tank, break down in the north and south side of Chicago. Nice place to be at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Break down on the south side of Chicago. Seminary with me. We got no cash. I got a guy from Australia who's got a checkbook. <laughs> We're there in the middle of the night. So we call, we call, we call, we call the car breaks down. We call, we call a tow truck. Tow truck driver comes. You see a tow truck driver come. The tow truck driver comes. A nice fancy. We pull him over. And then a guy, Muslim, comes with <laughs> a second tow truck. Jumps out, pulls out a knife, pulls out a metal bar, and says, you're taking my tow, you call me. He said, we just called tow truck. We didn't think there was a whole bunch of tow trucks showing up in the middle of the night. <laughs> we thought that's the one we called. That tow truck driver jumped in his car and truck and drove away before he got killed with another one. Then he was mad. He was a mad tow truck driver. Then he decides to haul us around the south side of Chicago. I let the other guys get in front of the car. I couldn't sit in the car, so I laid in the back of the uh, of the of the of the, of the, uh, the, the tow, laying down, and said, I refuse to be happy. <laughs> I know the day is going to come when I want to think about this day and I refuse. I have to refuse and I'm so ticked off. I refuse. Well, on Michigan Avenue, we pull up. A bus comes behind us, an empty bus. A bus driver looks, he looks down and sees me laying in the back of a tow truck in the south side of Chicago. <laughs> looks down again. And then <laughs> he's gone. He was a dead body in the back of the truck. We get to the, we get to the hotel. And it's a 1920s hotel. It's a great place, 1920. It's the last time they changed the sheets. <laughs> and there was some kind of a hotel in which had a secret door to the bathroom that it was cool or something. So now we're in the, we're, we're pulling the wall for the secret entrance to the bathroom. Getting more and more ticked. And the whole time I was thinking, I refuse to be having of this. I refuse, I refuse, I refuse. And it was stupid. You know, right now, we are afraid of morons. <laughs> we're afraid of wimps. We're afraid of little devils. We're afraid of Bilderbergers. We don't have the wisdom of that Mexican man who came with a pitchfork in the battle and saw all Calles' men on top of the hill with all their armor and with all their weapons and all their fanciness came over the hill and he said how poorly clad they are for battle, how unready they are to fight, for they are not clothed with our lady. And he went into battle with his pitchfork and wiped out the armor of cows. Don't you know this is the time to love God? This is the time to have confidence. This is the time to rejoice. 
Because the victory is ours. It is not the time to be angry. It is not the time to worry. It is not the time to be upset. It's the time to rejoice. How long will the stupidity go on? How much will we have to offer up for the love of God? How much is he worth? I'm worried. That just means I'm a fool. But let us take away that worry. Let us remember this night. We are in a night right now which is going to end in which the, the Satan has been conquered and defeated. We already know the story. We already know the answer. Why don't we believe now? Why don't we have confidence now? Like a one Spanish soldier, he was baptized Catholic but did not know about Christ, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And he was told in the fight against the communists, he said, you see this scapular? It'll protect you in battle. It will. He put it on. And the next battle, he ran in front of all the machine guns. You can't kill me, I'm wearing the scapular. <laughs> he ran around all over the place. You know what? They didn't hit him. Are you crazy? No, what is going to Not one bullet hit him. He wasn't harmed. Because he believed in the scapula. Do we believe? They say, wash your hands. You're going to give her the coronavirus. First, you got to find it. But if you can find it, wash your hair. Is that the way to protect yourself? Try a scapula. It's the much better protection. What about having our holy faith? What about realizing in the night, that's when Christ rose? The night is the best time to know and love God. Every moment of the night, our enemy, he is losing his time. He is close to his defeat. The night is far advanced. Behold, the day is at hand. Let us believe in the night. This is the time to believe. Let's have confidence in the night. Let us rejoice in the night. That's what we have to do. And so let us rejoice in the sacred night. Have confidence in this night. Christ is risen. He's not here. He's going to meet us in Galilee. That angel, which was seen by the soldiers, petrified them as dead men. That angel shall say to us, Fear ye not. That beautiful angel is there now. He will protect us. Let's have confidence in the victory of our Lord and decide. Is there a more beautiful way to go than martyrdom? What is a happy death? St. Andrew is an expert of a happy death. We mentioned many times. Andrew was terrified of not dying on a cross. He said a happy death is to die on a cross. That's a happy death. And sure enough, he was able to be nailed to a cross. And he died a happy death. St. Joseph knows what a happy death is. It's a death with Mary. There in the room. It's a death with Christ. At our side, in our hearts. That's a happy death. How can it be anything other than that? Our Lord said, Do not fear those who can cause harm to your body but rather the one that will take away your soul. We should not fear any of those who can only harm our bodies. Have confidence in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Have confidence in his resurrection in the night. And we will have joy deep in our hearts. And this joy no man can take from us. That's what Christ said to his apostles on Holy Easter Sunday. He said before, 
I will give you a joy that no man can take from you. And this is the day that he gave it. And no one can take it from us. Without the resurrection, our faith is in vain. With the resurrection, Satan is in vain. Those that follow Satan are in vain. Those that live as a sin unrepentant are in vain. All the members of the army of the devil, they are in vain. How long did it take for that great army of the Egyptians to be wiped out? Not very long. How long did it take for the angel to wipe out the 40,000 soldiers of Sennacherib? Not very long. How long did it take for David to defeat Goliath? Not very long. How long will it take for the Blessed Virgin Mary to defeat the New World Order? Not very long. Let's have confidence in our victory and believe in it in the night. And when the day comes, we will rejoice even more. Really, God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.